Oops, nice. She's been joining us lots. Huh. Mm. It's always the same tips. I got it. I don't need the same tips anymore. Oh, yeah. I don't got a notification that you're live. <laughs> yeah, it'll do that. One viewer over there. These feel super weird today. They're stiff. That's because they're getting my mojo of me. It's okay. It's super weird. Oops. Okay, thanks. I'm as under control as I'm going to be. Not a lot. <laughs> Hello, everybody out online. Leah here at my sewing room on Tools and Techniques Thursday. Um, thanks for joining us from YouTube or Facebook, whichever, um, whichever place you're tuning in from. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to show you guys some of my absolute favorite things about embroidering on a not domestic machine today. Um, we're going to talk about some of my favorite embroidery hoops because I'm a bit of a tool junkie. So that's the game plan. <laughs> we're going to talk about the weird things you can embroider if you have the tools to embroider it. Um, most people out in our kind of world, you guys are all sewing on or embroidering on domestic embroidery machines. And if you're doing lots and lots of embroidery there and you're having a great time, that's awesome. If you're wanting to expand what you can embroider on and maybe turn your embroidery hobby into um, a hobby that pays for itself with a little bit of um, side business income, um, you might want to not have to sew every project from start to finish and just do the fun embroidery part. So um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I like to embroider on when I'm not at work and how I do them and show you what I would definitely have in my toolbox if I wanted to get into business uh, doing embroidery on things that are already out in the market. So we're going to talk about embroidering on the hard to hoop um, and pre-made objects today. So the first thing I'm going to show you is we're actually going to do some stitching in a moment, but um, Things that are tricky to embroider on, but you might be able to... Oh, I should not have all those tags on that. That would be better. Let's drop the tags off so this makes more sense. Um, this is an apron blank. So unlike some of the other blanks that we talk about um, in some of our other classes, this is a waist apron. Not available at my sewing room, but definitely something you could pick up maybe at a hardware store or kitchen store somewhere else so pre-made apron um, this one happens to have nice big side pockets which I quite like um, but it's definitely something you can embroider on if you're looking to do something like this on a home machine you'll probably just be able to put the embroidery up here on the top where you'll only be stitching through the one layer because trying to get that pocket flattened in your hoop uh, there's no way with the size of this to avoid stitching through the back side of it. So when we get into talking about um, multi-needle embroidery, semi-industrial, industrial embroidery, uh, the machine setups are quite different. So I'm just going to roll slightly out of the way. Um, the big difference here is it's the bobbin case area on a multi-needle or single needle semi-industrial. It has a very small free arm that the hoops can slide over. So if you can get something in a hoop and over this arm, it can be embroidered. Chelsea's right next to me. She's going to do some camera work in a minute. <laughs> you can come in and say hi. <laughs> um, anything you can get in this hoop, like in a hoop and over that free arm, you can embroider on, which uh, expands the possibilities immensely for what you can embroider on. And there's many, many different hoops available for these machines that are very job specific. So um, something like a hat frame uh, is designed for embroidering on a ball cap definitely cool. Um, there's clamp frames for things like shoes. There's different types of border frames that you could be used for, say, the lawn chair back that we did in the Brother Cottage Getaway series. There's something similar in the domestic, but um, different 
options on the multi-needle. Um, getting into something really small like a onesie or a t-shirt. Do we have a t-shirt over there? Probably. Probably. Um, so getting into something that you've already purchased that you don't want to take apart to embroider on or you don't want to play like hooping gymnastics where you have to fold that whole shirt out of the way and hold, hold it all and pin it all all the way around the hoop as you go. So we're going to talk about clamp hoops today. <laughs> this 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 is done with scan and cut. This doesn't have embroidery on it. Definitely not embroidery. But something like this, like kid size t-shirt, um, if you're to try and get this in a domestic hoop, you have to get a flat area and then manage all the rest of that bulk around the outside of the shirt. Like, it's chaotic. Not my favorite thing to do. However, embroidering something like this with a hoop like this, like a clamp hoop, pretty lickety split easy. So. We'll get that hooped in a moment. We'll pretend to get that hooped in a moment. Um, kind of three types of hoops that I'm gonna, going to talk about today. They're all in the clamp hoop family. Um, the one that I've been running for many years at home is called the M clamp frame. And that is this one here. And essentially, uh, it's a four by four or 100 by 100 millimeter frame, which is great for lots of things like left front chest placement, um, smaller logos on lots of things, but it opens really, really wide and has two different textures on the top layer of that grippy. So the really nice thing about this particular hoop, um, if you have something where hooping your fabric will damage it and a sticky back stabilizer isn't really friendly because it's awkward or slippy, um, we can be super gentle with this. So we've got some suede here. This is the kind of hoop you'd want to use on suede because you won't get hoop burn trying to hoop it. Um, something like a, a soft shell jacket, if you wanted to embroider on something like a soft shell jacket where you will see hoop imprints, um, this is a really nice option. Um, this is my go-to hoop for anything that I can do in a four x four hoop at home. If I have to do lots of repeats, I use this hoop all the time. Um, so this particular one, um, usually what I do, when I go to run it, where do I put that piece of stabilizer? I might need to do this from the top. So, move that note out of the way. So on this frame um, at home, when I get ready to set it up, I cut stabilizer just a little bit bigger than what I need and wrap it around that. It's easier when I'm standing up and I'm not using sticky back. This is my piece of stabilizer for the thing I'm actually going to stitch today. And it is curling the wrong direction. It is fighting me every step of the way. <laughs> so I just essentially wrap it in stabilizer. and then slide whatever I want to embroider inside. Or on the outside, slide it onto the outside. And then lock down those clamps. So this piece of stabilizer is too big so I can't get down quite as low as I did when I actually did the embroidery. Um, but now that is held and the big secret part at the back there is that free arm will fit down the back. So this is going to sit on top of the free arm where you'd normally have your embroidery hoop. And the free arm is going to sit back here, embroider here, and your pocket still works. It's brilliant. So that's clamp frame M. Um, this is available in two formats. Um, there's the one with the driver for the Persona, which is Brothers Single Needle, so the PRS 100, or the other one, which will fit on the 6 and 10 needle machines. Um, you do need the right thing because the, this is the hoop. And unlike your domestic machines, um, where all your hoops just slide in on the same place or clip in on the same place, these all have unique uh, attachment points to attach to the machine, which tells the machine what type of hoop it has in place so it keeps itself safe. It's really smart. So the D driver goes with the M clamp frame hoop and they'll slide in together kind of like that and then that's 
ready to stitch. Normally I put the driver on the machine and then, and then do that. But I can leave my hoop on the frame and just slide my next embroidery on when I'm ready to move on to the next one. So uh, Clamp Frame M, huge fan. Um, I've used it with puffy vests, like the really super awkward things. It's also how I do toques. And bunny ears. Oh yeah, we embroidered bunny ears for somebody recently around here um, on stuffed animals. So clamp frames. They're great. So that's the M. And then in the last year, uh, Brother came out with a new pair of magnetic, they're called magnetic flash frames. Flash frames? I should know the name. What is the box? Versatile, Versatile magnetic frame. <laughs> Yes. Um, so similar similar concept uh, where they've got a clamp. I'll just take this one off. Uh, but these ones have big magnets, which I absolutely, I love a good magnet to hold everything in place. The photo taking team got everything like squirreled right away there. <laughs> it made it really hard to get that off. <laughs> so when that hoop is flat, um, the top lifts up out of the way if you're flat on your table, but normally this one you would leave installed on your machine and slide your next um, item onto the hoop with the stabilizer already underneath it. Um, this one has great big magnets to hold everything in place. So something like a tote bag. Um, this happens to be the 5 by 7 version of this. Same thing, we do stabilizer underneath other than I lost my stabilizer. Can't lose my stabilizer. So if I wanted to get further down on this tote bag with my embroidery, I can pull this nearly to the bottom of my tote bag. Really as far down as I want. I can feel the metal ridge in there. This tote bag's been folded for some time, so. We don't have to be right at the bottom. You probably wouldn't be right at the bottom. But then once that's roughly where you want it, this could be marked. I would probably mark with chalk. Um, then we just add the magnets. And if you need to resort it all as you go. So magnets to hold that all in place. And then that free arm is coming down inside the bag to allow you to stitch. So great big area there. Nice, easy way to stitch on a pre-made tote bag. Not that making a tote bag is super hard, but sometimes you just don't want to do the sewing part of it. You just want to do the magic of the embroidery. <laughs> it's my favorite part. <laughs> so that's the large clamp frame like this. There's also a four by four version. So. That is the versatile magnetic frames, and they come in uh, two, kind of two options. They come with just the frame, or the frame and the driver. So if you wanted both the 4x4 and the 5x7 versions of the versatile frame, you'd need one with a driver. So this is the F driver in this case, and one with just the frame. They work out to about the same price no matter which way you pair that up. Um, but you could have both and then just interchange the frame as you go from four by four to five by seven, depending what you're working on. So when I was prepping for today's Facebook live, I tried to think of the one, I tried to find something that there's no way you could figure out how to embroider on a domestic machine to show you why you totally want a uh, multi-needle. <laughs> they did some hunting, did some sleuthing, took a lot of stores, uh, poking through to find something that was just weird enough that I couldn't figure out how to take it apart and do it um, elsewhere. So I'm gonna take it off the frame that's on and then we'll talk about how to get it hooped and get it set up and then we'll, we'll embroider on something super weird today. Cause that's my, I like embroidering on weird things. I don't know about you. Okay, so we're back on that camera. Um, do the magic of television here. Not the magic of television, magic of YouTube and Facebook Live. So, of all of the strange, bizarre, pre-built things I could find that are made of fabric, um, this is the closet organizer. Somewhat generic. 
happens to have pockets. I was very excited about the pockets, but it's all it's all fabric. Um, some pretty heavy interfacing or cardboard uh, for structure at the top and bottom, so we won't be able to embroider through that. Um, but these pockets looked like just prime real estate for embroidery. <laughs> and then maybe whatever my kids put in here will stay organized. That's my hope, at least. Um, do you have a marking pen over there? Because I don't see them next to me now. Okay, might have to go. Chelsea, you have to entertain the people while I find a marking pencil. Hang on. I had one nearby a day ago. You find the marking pencil. Oh, this will work. Okay. This will work. Mm, give the small ruler. The, like the 12 by 12. Oh, there it is. That's what I need. Okay. So how are we actually going to go about doing something like embroidering on a crazy pocket? Uh, first off, uh, this could definitely be ironed. Um, I'm not going to iron it. Probably going to drop stuff on the floor in a moment here. But... Uh, first things first, I'm going to figure out if I can get this pocket flat enough that I can measure it and mark it. And then we'll get our hoop in place and get ready to embroider. So even without it being super duper flat on the table, I can at least get a rough idea of how big it is. It's about 9 inches wide. Just under 9 inches. I'm going to mark the center point so my embroidery is centered. And this is just an airy race marker. It is showing up on here, so I'm I'm pretty content with that. Um, in uh, lots of what I embroider on, I don't use airy race because sometimes they do stay. Uh, lots of times I just use chalk because it usually bounces off as you stitch through it. Um, we're at not quite eight inches deep on this pocket, so I'm going to go just a little bit shy of that. Piece of stabilizer I had. This is an instance where I just need my stabilizer to cover the base of that hoop. So I don't need it super big and I don't need a ton of overhang because it'll make it harder to hoop. Just that big. Cut it just a little smaller than I normally would if I was hooping on a domestic machine. And I am going to use a sticky stabilizer because I can get it placed inside that pocket and then keep those together as it moves to the machine. So this is Stable Stick Tearaway uh, from OESD. And the other thing I would use if I wasn't using a stable stick type stabilizer, I would go in and use a uh, 505 spray on my stabilizer. And then hooping this sort of thing, kind of one of two options. Either we stabilize from the inside, which is always a little awkward, or we wrap the stabilizer around the hoop. But just knowing that this one is a little wrinkly right now, quite a soft canvas. Feel my stabilizer's down to about there right now, inside my pocket. Super, a super odd wall, all oddball way of hooping. Um, making sure there's no wrinkles. Kind of nice and flat on there. 
Uh, generally, you always want to hoop on a flat surface. Sometimes you have a project that is just so weird that it's really hard to. So I'm going to leave this at this stage and we're going to get the machine ready so that um, we can put the hoop on and then slide this on because right now this is chaos. So I believe switching to that, um, we will go to that camera. Um, so parts of your multi-needle embroidery machine. Um, I'm going to embroider this on the 10 needle because it has the built-in camera, which is really lovely for um, checking your placement and seeing how things are going to look. Um, the big part here, the driver, is where the hoops slide in. So the traditional hoops slide in uh, to the A or B driver, and there's two screws that hold those in place. Take those off, and we'll switch drivers. Install the F driver. We have, we have pretty wicked don't we? Yeah, you should be able to come closer. More. Okay, so what are we going to embroider today? Um, we're going to pick a... My daughter requested something to hold doll clothes in her closet. So we're going to... We're going to go in and look at our font choices. And knowing my Miss Sarah, she likes pretty things like pretty fonts. So I'm going to call, we're just going to embroider one, one that says clothes because we're going to put doll clothes in the first one. So as we pick a font and pick our sizing, um, Brother has multiple sizes of fonts available in their machine. We're going to need to go smaller. I'm doing this in a 4x4 hoop. It's not a giant area. So smaller letters will fit the space better. And there's upper and lower case. We're going to embroider the word close and hit set. Um, I think we could probably add in her doll's name. She's got one of those 18 inch dolls that's got a name. That's how girls go these days. We don't have to use the same font for that. We'll do that one small as well. Ginger. And when we've got two items in there, they are they're loaded. Wait, that's not entirely helpful. Oh, and I see that that should probably say ginger's clothes, not just ginger clothes. That would make more sense. So we can edit. I think it's. Uh. What did you bump? We've got a new toy in the studio. Chelsea bumps. Teams have a new toy and I do bump. <laughs> she did. <laughs> of course I did. Okay, I found the button actually. I fixed it. Okay. <laughs> do you get the tutorial ahead of time? No. Okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so I'm going to say Ginger's clothes. Um, I'm going to add in one more thing here. I think... Uh, Miss Sarah would like love to have a border around that. So maybe we'll do a rectangular border. I've got a funky barricaded thread to play with, so let's let's put a border around all of that. So and my border, I can change the size. And just to make sure that it's still gonna fit in my 4x4 hoop, we'll be looking at the size on the top of the screen. Uh, 
center that. Let's ruin this. Word close is a good size. Let's move it straight down. And gingers is a little too big, so we'll make that a little bit smaller. Ginger sculpts. Looks pretty cool. Um, when we go to end edit, right now this is all just set up to look like it's stitching in black. However, uh, my daughter loves purple, so we're going to stitch this in a couple different purple threads. And that's the perk of stitching on a multi-needle, is having the option of stitching on multiple threads. So right now, I need to re-thread uh, my first and fourth needle. So what I've done is I've taken the old colors off and tied a knot to tie my threads on. So when I when I change threads, got a couple knots. I'm gonna change one and four. So did you uh, pull the thread out of the needle before you started pulling it through? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so just in front of the needle, I set up there. So two new threads there, and then on screen, uh, we're gonna use the needle change tool and. I'm already set up to go to one. I'm already set up on needle one because that's where it turns on. So just thread the machine, press the needle threader button. And then because I pulled the thread through on this one, I just have to guide the thread under the threader and then press the threader button again. And then we'll move to needle four. Touching four on screen. Moves to needle four. Press the threader. And then that is thread the needles for me. All easy, super easy. Um, and if I wanted to actually see which threads I had on the machine, I could also label them on screen, um, which when you get working on projects with more colors involved, always helpful. So I'm going to go back to one. And there is uh, thread colors in here, default thread colors. You can also change uh, brand. I've got Isocord. got a dark purple and we could go by number I don't know if I can see the number on that one from here three on one four and I can anchor that to that needle my needle two that's two nine two zero And then my needle four that I also want to use in this project has 9921, which is one of the variegated. It might not show up, but that's okay. We can go back and pick something. It's got lighter tones in it. So I'm just going to put a light purple in there so that when I change this on screen, it makes more sense. It's also called ginger jar. It's just perfect. <laughs> It's like I planned this. <laughs> um, so my favorite way of setting up on a multi-needle with this is there's an option to do manual color sequencing. So you can go in ahead of time and tell it which needle you want to use for your thread changes. So I don't necessarily want to stitch from needle one, two, and three, even though I just have three colors. Because I don't feel like re-threading needle two or three, whichever one it is. Um, so my first one I'm going to do in the plum, which is the dark purple on needle one. Uh, nope, close. We're going to do in two. Ginger, we're going to do in the dark purple. And then the variegated that I have on needle four, we'll do our border. So that's the first part of our setup. Uh, this, All of that's figured out. Now we're ready to add our hoop in. We've already got the driver in place. Uh, bobbin is just underneath the machine, under in the free arm. It's already in there. So sometimes, depending what you're working on, even if it's really weird, you can still get your bobbin in and out to change it. So the uh, versatile frames, they'll come on. You don't need the magnets in place when you bring them in. They'll go in sideways and twist. And 
and then that may will slide in and clip in place. But this is still able to be opened. It's fantastic and easy. So from here, we are going to grab our super weird thing that we have half ratty hooped. I might change how I'm doing this. Now, I'm going to change how I'm doing this. It does not want to be done that way. <laughs> we want the stabilizer on first. It is sticking to everything else. <laughs> Sliding that pocket right over. Um, with the markings on the hoop and the markings on my fabric. I can get this right bang centered without um, really any effort at all, which is lovely. I like I like doing things the easy way. So I don't know if you can get close enough to see my little blue lines on there. And boy, it's making me more tangled. <laughs> markings on there will line up with our markings on our hoop. So we're going to start with the magnets on the back. We can get that first one in. If we need to readjust it all, we can. that oh that's a little a little askew we want to straighten it out a little bit easy enough to just kind of lift up on the tabs and release the magnets ever so slightly so from there um the only things we need to watch for when we're hooping anything weird is that we did indeed get all that bulk underneath that free arm so yep i can feel the free arm it's it's we don't have pocket up underneath our hoop always a good thing to watch for i have ruined one or two things along the way by not paying attention to that um and if it's something really awkward that it's not going to bump on the sides here so because the bulk of the awkwardness is either hanging way low on this or out this way we're going to be okay so on screen at this point um i could double check my placement there's a camera on the 10 needle we go to live camera here And it will show me center position. And this seems to think it wants to be in a slightly bigger hoop. So we're just going to go edit. big border thing. I'm going to make it just a smidge smaller so that the 4x4 frame shows up on screen again. Now when we go to live camera, we can see. That's not what I want. Go away, little arrows. <laughs> These work slightly differently than mine at home. <laughs> Generally, live camera, you can see my finger right in my center spot there. I'll turn all my crosshairs. I'm pretty much bang on the center, but I could. My light blue lines are pretty, pretty faint on here. I can see them on your phone. That's very nice on you. Okay, well, they're, it's my eyes then that are the problem. <laughs> so, I'm back centered on my crosshairs. 
Clearly I wasn't quite centered when I hooped. It was pretty close. It was pretty awkward. It was really awkward. But, it, but it, you did it. I did it. You did it. So, fabric's nice and flat. Everything's ready to go. When I'm ready to hit go, I'm going to go to the embroidery screen. It's going to tell me 11 minutes. I've got 3,954 stitches. It's going to start on needle two, go to needle one, and then needle four. And right now it's set to stitch 800 stitches per minute. So you're here for the embroidery channel. Come along for the ride. <laughs> uh, to get started, we're going to hit lock and then the green go button. There's a zoom on there too. No, yeah. I don't want to touch the buttons again. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you want to... the, the new camera tool is pretty fun. It is good. Yeah. Let me get the plastic. Your tour on Mondays? Yeah. New? Less. Less jerky moon. Um, so the machine is going to trim the threads as it goes between the letters. You don't have to go back and put things in stitches. And whoop. I'm just gonna check my bobbin thread. Tension is just a wee bit weird, so. Hmm. Happened there. I don't know. But decided to where it was going. Somewhere near here, there should be a tiny little screwdriver. Hmm. Pause for a moment, show me while we. <laughs> Talk to the box of goodies. Oh, the box of goodies. Right there. Oh, the box of goodies. I'm okay. gonna figure out my camera. I haven't embroidered on this machine very many times. It needs a slight tweak. I don't know what happened to this camera. Uh, I don't know either. I don't know. Uh, double press this one and it re recenters. Oh, great. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Slight tweak on the bobbin tension. And our camera's back. <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm actually gonna back up a little bit. Back up and redo the O. Redo the O. It had too much white showing. I'll just call it very big. Not the looking white one though. <laughs>
don't know what that camera's doing. <laughs> I don't know. It's deciding where it goes. I think it's every time the arm moves, it jumps. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't like the arm moving. No. <laughs> Chelsea's it, got this camera stuff figured out. Because I was ready for it. <laughs> so this type of thing, uh, glades for like, 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 t-shirts, hoodies, anything that's awkward to get on a boot, that you have lots of extra bulk on, you could get so many things hooped on here. So many. Whew. That is a message that I know what it means. Every once in a while your machine might give you a message like this. Uh, wiper message, wiper error, uh, means it didn't trim properly. So, usually the solution to that, little snip, hit OK, and then carry on. Like the flashing light. Yes, it's very good at letting you know when it's unhappy. Um, brother does have an app to coordinate with this one called the My Stitch Monitor. Oh, and this one, it unthreaded the needle, no big deal. And the best part is, it tells you what pool of thread is having issues. Number two there is in red. Yeah, so if you weren't sitting here paying attention, which generally I'm not sitting right next to my machine unless I'm doing applique, we can back up a few stitches. Back up to that beginning of that S. Two thread. But it's the screen to finish the threading process. And then turn it again. There's rumbly thunder outside. Maybe that's not going to get hard for this. Let's blame the thunder. I'm going to blame the thunder. I'm going to too. Jinxing us. Because this is just weird enough. No, take the hoop back off. And just double check. Uh, when it doesn't pick up that bobbin thread, uh, sometimes sometimes you just need to make sure your tail's long enough on your bobbin thread. Mm. Awkward. Awkward project on and off. No big deal. General rules of bleed threading, like all other places in the world, when things go wrong, re-thread, pop and lock. And it switched to needle one for the next color. Didn't get all in. No, it's okay. Okay. And I didn't have to sit there re-threading. I didn't have to come back after two minutes to re-thread, other than we had some minor hiccups, but it just went on to the next color all by itself. Which is what I like. This makes me happy. Um, so if I was doing a whole bunch of these at home, I would know that I had 11 minutes to go do something else while this one stitched out. Even though there was a couple of color changes in there, I wouldn't have to sit there and babysit it. Which means I can go sew on my other machine, I can get the next one ready to hoop and get it marked out. I can watch garbage on the internet, I can watch my sewing room tutorials online. We could go sew something else. We could go sew something else. I have time to watch sewing videos. That's great. Well, I embroider. It's great. You could learn more about every machine possible. Right?
And while these look a little bit intimidating, they're not hard to run. And we do offer them. And as I get more videos filmed, you'll have more videos to watch. Yay! We like videos. I can't edit the video, for sure. Me too. So, we're already halfway there. Yeah. Another nice thing that I really like about the multi-meal is the service period on it is way longer than domestic machines. Ooh, so how long? Um, major service, roughly 1,500 hours of use time. Um, just for frame of reference, my 10 needle at home crossed 31 million stitches, and I'm at about 1,000 hours on it. So it's not been for a major overhaul yet. And I've still got some time with doing that kind of routine maintenance on it, um, shortly, but, uh, you can go a whole lot longer. These don't necessarily need to come in every year if you're kind of getting hobby level use out of them. If you were so into business, kind of full-time hours, um, it would probably need to get serviced every year. But definitely, this is going to speed up your employability. So if you've got a stack of designs, you feel like, I need to stitch to you. We're gonna get through them. We're gonna get through them. Or if we have a whole bunch of Christmas presents to do. Yeah. yeah. We've got lots of Christmas presents. Grandson's whole hockey team needs something. A whole bunch of cooties. Right? A whole bunch of hats. Toilet bag. Yeah. Oh yes, you can embroider hats on here. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple hats here. So very cute hats. Yeah, it's totally doable with yeah. on a multi-needle. This, like these structured front hats, not possible to get them flat enough to blow it on a home There you go. But that's another day. Another video. Not plant boots day. We don't do we don't do hats and plant boots. <laughs> we do hats and plant boots. <laughs> Getting to the back of the It's going to switch colors again. It is. <laughs> And Leah's over here, not uh, touching it. Hands free. Oh, you missed it. Oh, I did. I was looking at Leah. My apologies, oh. friends. <laughs> it's, it's it's on to the next color. It's gonna be variegated. Cause I I always want a place to use variegated thread. I don't always have them. Who doesn't want places for variegated thread? But borders on something like this seems like the place to do. Sure is. So if you're ever wondering about like the color sorting on variegated thread, look at the top of the spool and you'll get a sense of the color placement and like whether it's short runs of those colors or long runs. This is a very short run of this color. So short run of the dark purple, very short of the, the light, light purple in there. Very short runs. So you don't get big chunks of any color in the row. And it might be a regular as well. I'm not sure it's a regular sorting. the other shelves in the storage unit, but we'll find something. But you can even hang this in your sewing room for things like stabilizer. Oh, that would be lovely. Or what other odds and ends you can do? Roll the vinyl. Roll the vinyl. Fabric that you need for all. Works in progress, like fabric in the center, and then patterns inside. Okay. Yeah. Keep it 
felt organized. I don't have a closet in my phone anymore. That's why it's not going to be the phone. I don't have a closet in there. But it's stuck and goes back to that guy. <laughs> Oops. I have a problem. <laughs> and then when this is all done stitching, makes a very happy noise. Blinky lights, happy embroidery noises. And to get this off and either move on to the next pocket or the next item, it is just lift up on the clamps for the magnets. Leave them all over the place so you can find them later. Shimmy that back off. Yes. And then weird organizer is embroidered. Weird organizer. <laughs> weird closet organizer. I'm going to go back to this camera. Okay, great. <laughs> So, pocket on a closet organizer, totally embroidered on the multi-needle. Um, definitely one of the more awkward things I've ever embroidered. Probably not the most awkward, but we're getting close. <laughs> we'll talk shoes another day. I do need a pair of embroidered shoes. Everybody needs a pair of embroidered shoes. They're so much fun. So, um, this was just a stable stick tearaway, so we could go back in and tear away that tearaway stabilizer. And in a pocket like this, I wouldn't work too hard on getting the extra bits of stabilizer out. Just tear out around the design, supporting the design as you go. There we go. That light purple is just a little too light. Hmm. Might have to do the other side differently. Don't worry, I have five more pockets. <laughs> I'll get the color scheme right eventually. <laughs> so that is embroidering with the rather versatile magnetic frames. Um, like I said, there's a five by seven and a four by four. This one I did with the four by four because the five by seven was too wide um, to get in there. So that's going to be the limiting factor as to what you can hoop that's super weird is what will actually fit on a weird hoop in the machine. Um, sometimes you can't get a hoop in there, so then you can't embroider it. But um, only really your imagination is stopping you from what you can embroider. I haven't, I haven't found much that I couldn't embroider along the way <laughs> with a multi-needle. <laughs> and one or two things that were very challenging, <laughs> but there's often a workaround. So if this is something that interests you or you want more information on the different hoops available for a multi-needle or how you would go about embroidering something really unique, um, get in touch with us here at the store and we can either direct you to the hoop, direct you to the machine, um, or get you all set up to do whatever that oddball, not standard embroidery, um, is that you want to try because it's super fun. Um, and very rewarding to set embroider on something that looks like it would be impossible. <laughs> <laughs> do a little happy dance um so those are those are a couple of my favorite hoops love them um personally don't own the versatile magnetic frame yet um it's on the wish list of when i i don't know when i need to pick me up <laughs> for a christmas present <laughs> we'll, we'll get another hoop for my house um <laughs> Definitely a hoop junkie. Love having all the hoops. So a couple more things. Um, as always, uh, there's always new fabric in store. Uh, new fabric in behind me is a range of things. We have... Oh, if Chelsea. You want to figure out which one, I'll read for you. Okay. We can play a guessing game. Okay. Do you want to figure out which one's which? Sure. Okay. Let Polka me... dot ladybug. How much is it? That one. Nope. Left. Yeah, that's polka dot ladybug. Okay. Polka dot honey. <laughs> yeah. That one? Good guess. Happy hearts ladybug. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Bugs and frogs. I hope that's that one, but it definitely see... is. I don't see any frogs. It has ladybugs at the end, and I didn't want to spoil your fun of guessing. Because <laughs> there was no ladybugs left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Game on. Yeah, that one's cool. It's actually a poker chip. Nice. It'd be great for, like, a Vegas theme party. Yeah. So fun. You need matching bandana bandanas for your Vegas trip? Yes. 
or matching bags. Right. Embroidered. Right. Be so awesome. Save the bees. Save the bees. Christmas celebrate. There's two of them. Good guesses. <laughs> and then there's black polka dots. Oh, what? There's black polka dots? What? Why would we ever have polka dot fabric here in the store? That's crazy talk. <laughs> crazy talk. Good guesses, Leah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, other things going on uh, tomorrow morning. We have our Bernina software class, uh, the last of the series that we're running right now. Um, we're talking about the difference between Bernina designer version eight and designer nine um that released earlier this year and talk about the reasons you might want to move up to designer nine um if you're running um an older version of bernina software um game plan for fall is to run more version nine software classes to support those people that do move up um and get more software in their hands uh there's so much you can do with software that you can't do on board your machine easily um, so if you want more information about that, uh, tomorrow's class might be helpful. You can call in and get registered. It will be recorded, so if you don't get a chance to watch live, you can watch later on. Always an option. Um, we still have a few seats left in our August 5th uh, Harvest Table event uh, from Kimberbell. A couple, couple spots. I know there's one seat left in store. Um, a few left if you want to join us virtually. Uh, the projects in that are super fun. Again, you'll learn a little bit more about variegated thread and have a chance to play with it. Um, or not. You you decide which thread you want to use for that project. But uh, the Kimberbell project is really the a la carte, not a la carte, harvest table is really, really adorable. Um, next week on the 14th, we have our sixth session with uh, Leanna Kirky from Brother Canada. Um, she's going to be talking about embroidering on hoodies with a really funky applique technique called rip away applique. Um, so if you want to join us for that class, you can call and get registered. And uh, her notes have been phenomenal for how to work through the exercises. She'll talk a little bit about digitizing software and about the project itself. So lots of information for you on that. Again, it will be recorded. So if you know, you're out gallivanting on the 14th of July and you'd rather watch it on the 30th of July. Um, that's always an option with recorded classes. And the other thing we have coming up, uh, September 29th, 30th, and October 1st, we have a guest instructor coming from OESD. Woo! We're not sure which one yet. That We'll probably find that out next week. Um... <laughs> We have a guest instructor. It's one of two people, but I can't tell you who it is because I don't know. Um, and we're doing uh, three days of events. The first day is called Embroidery Essentials. If you want the best pricing on stabilizer going into the fall for all, all your embroidery needs, um, you should join us for one of those days or all three. Um, embroidery Essentials on September 29th is... I talk all about stabilizers, embroidery techniques, and all the tools and uh, tips and tricks that you might need. Uh, lecture demo. Uh, you'll learn lots and lots. And like I said, fantastic pricing on stabilizer that day. Um, if you're interested in uh, actually applying all that stuff you learn in the first day and you want to embroider along and you don't have an embroidery machine yet, but you're thinking you want one or you've started with a little machine and you want to upgrade, um, uh, Stitching in the Kitchen is a two-day hands-on embroidery event here in the store and we're looking for all those people that maybe your embroidery machine isn't meeting your needs, maybe your embroidery machine, maybe you don't have one yet. So we're going to have machines here for you to use and uh, we'll get you um, hooked up with a partner so you can both learn all those techniques and stitch all the projects that we're going to be making. So there's six fabulous projects in those two days. Um, We'll probably have some open box machines with like phenomenal event pricing. So definitely if you're looking for um, that new to you machine, uh, it would be a good time to, to get registered. And if you call and register over the phone um, and you're leaning towards brother, let us know and we'll get you sat down on a brother. If you're leaning towards Bernina, we'll get you sat down on a Bernina um, for that event. So we'd love to have you here for that. And if you're thinking you want to try a multi-needle, um, you can come in store and do that event on one of our multi-needles as well. So some really great options for you coming up in that program. Um, we've mentioned it a couple times. We're going to mention it every day until 
September and probably still after September. Um, we have a new mystery quilt launching September 1st. It's called Patchwork in Paradise. Um, it's a mystery quilt. It's a mystery novel. It's a sew along. It's all of that wrapped up into one fabulous 13 month program. Um, new blocks every month for 12 months plus a assembly class at the end the techniques and the like you're you are going to learn new quilting skills for sure um joining us on that journey uh our fabulous long armor barb wrote the novel designed the quilt so we're super excited you can call and register there's three colorways you'll get to pick which one you want to play with it's included in your class fee and then you'll get those little snippets of the story every month and your new block every month and your new class every month so definitely come check that out here in store or give us a call or check out the web. Um, if you enjoyed watching today's live presentation of embroidering a very odd closet organizer uh, with a versatile magnetic frame or you want more information, um, definitely hit the notification and subscribe buttons on YouTube and Facebook. Follow us, um, hit the like button. And if you're getting notifications from us, uh, there's a good chance we'll be live from Bernina University a little bit next week. So we, <laughs> we, Chelsea, Chelsea's new testing tool was our new go live and walk around tool. Um, very excited to give that a drive. Um, today was a kind of first test drive live with that here in store. Um, but we will be live from Bernina University at least a little bit next week. But probably not at 4.15, probably randomly throughout the day. <laughs> so, um... Definitely hit that notification button so that you know when we go live and you get all the new info from Bernina really as soon as we get it, which I'm very excited to share with you guys. Um, thanks for joining me on Tools and Techniques today, and we will see you guys uh, next week sometime.